Hi there everyone, hope you're well. Uh, today's running thoughts, I'm going to talk about meds. And I don't mean medicine by that, uh, it actually stands for minimum effective doses. So there's been a few sort of articles and podcasts that I've uh, come across this week which all kind of uh, back this theory up. Um, so yeah, basically, I another mistake I made during my athletics career was that I was of the belief that, you know, more is better. And uh, I was always a bit of a goody-goody, you know, at school as well. And uh, yeah, I always felt like I had to be doing something. Uh, and then I was weak if I wasn't. And resting was, was um, just laziness. And, you know, you had to be tough. And you get the picture. Uh, so that was before I was wise and knew about paradoxes. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm going to show you a graph now. Because it does help to really, like, demonstrate it visually. Um, so I hope you can sort of see this, like it's on the, oh no, <laughs> oh gosh, okay, if I hold it like that, oh it's all going to be back to front isn't it, okay I'm going to post this afterwards so you can see it properly, but basically I'll try and explain now, so at this point here, that's your current um, fitness level, let's say, when you train you go down um, and your ability to perform goes down because you're tired. And then as you give yourself time to recover and um, sort of go up into this phase, that's when you adapt to the stimuluses that you've given yourself through training. Um, and then you're obviously fitter there and then more able to perform. But equally, if you then do get lazy, uh, or too lazy, let's say, then it starts to tail off again and you get the, like, the, the decompensation. Um, so, as I say, a common mistake of athletes is that they will, because they always think they should be doing something, they will train and then they won't allow themselves to get back up past this point here and they'll just keep going down and down and down and effectively digging themselves into a hole. Um, so, yeah, as I say, that's, that's what I did. Now, one of the articles that I read um, was about this theory of 80-20 training and it, it kind of accuses a lot of athletes of being lazy trainers uh, in that they will mainly train in a kind of a sort of a 50-60% effort zone um, and therefore they're not getting like maximum benefits, they're just sort of effectively tiring themselves out and yet they, they don't have the energy or the, the sort of the impetus um, or mental drive to, to be able to train because like they've burnt themselves out effectively. Um, so he says it's far better and actually less lazy, uh, more courageous almost, to really, for 20% of the time, to really train hard and to focus, okay, um, and to get into that like red zone where you're going to get, you're going to dig yourself down low, so then you can kind of rebound back up high on that graph. So it's, it's almost like one of those equal and opposite reactions. So it's far better to, say, to, to sort of go really low and then give yourself in the rest of the 80% of the time a chance to get up to a higher level. Uh, you're just going to get far more bang for your buck. And um, yeah, as well, like leave yourself less open to, to injury and illness um, from, from overuse or uh, overtraining. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll try and find that article again and post it up for you because it was a really interesting one. Um, and yeah, on, on that note, as well, something that I did start to do towards the last end of my career, which I found worked quite well, was uh, I would combine training sessions sometimes. So part of the like pain of training, if you like, not sort of physical pain, just like annoyance, is that you have to keep getting yourself up for a session. Um, so you, you like you have to get changed. You have to sort of you know you get a bit of the adrenaline going, even if it's not going to be a hard session. Um, so you know you have to shower more. You have to wash more clothes. You, it, it just you have to travel there. Uh, you know it's it's pain. So I used to then start to combine sessions. Like for example, uh, I would do a weight session and go for a run straight afterwards. And uh, I mean, there are schools of thought that say they shouldn't do that, but like I thought, you know, for my purposes anyway, I could do it. Um, and then I'm like thinking about that graph again, so that would then enable me to go down lower. And then because I wasn't having to spend as much time um, doing two training sessions, I had longer to then recover and to go up higher on the graph as a result. So yeah, that that worked really well for me um, to stay towards the end of my career. Um, and uh, yeah, on 
Oh, I was, no, I shall come back to that. Sorry, slightly different point. Um, okay. Uh, now, part of the sort of uh, mentality that I did used to have was was it was backed up by probably other things around me in my environment, like um, the coaches that weren't aware of this age twenty rule. Also, the gym that I trained at when I was studying in America, at Butler University, it had a sign above the door saying, "Could you have done more?" And again, goody two shoes me was like, oh, I probably could have done that. I'll go and do another set or I'll go and do something else when actually I've done everything I'm supposed to. Um, so I really, I should have just given that sign the knees and walked off. But anyway, um, yeah, right, moving on. So the, the point I was going to make was um, about, well, I was first, my eyes were first really opened about this whole idea that I was doing too much was when I spent a weekend training with, uh, at, the, at the time, he was the world record holder for the 800 metres, a guy called Wilson Kipkita. So incredibly lucky like, to have that opportunity. And um, yeah, he, i say, he really opened my eyes to the fact that uh, it's mainly about recovery as an athlete. And he even said that him and his coach, they never had a, a training programme. And he did, he looked at what I'd been doing. He said, you're doing too much, you're doing too much. And um, so what him and his coach would always do is that they'd sort of turn up on any given day, uh, they'd sort of like sort of do a bit of a warm up and then see how he'd feel and then do his training based on that. Um, so some days it'd be easy, some days it'd be hard, but it, it was like kind of very much moment to moment. So um, there was no kind of beating yourself up, it was just all about being honest with yourself. Um, and again, training out in Kenya, um, I used to train with the coach Claudia Berardelli, uh, who coached both track athletes and marathon athletes. And um, it's something that he came to realise was that he would always train his marathon athletes first thing in the morning and then track athletes in the afternoon. Um, and he would set his marathon athletes a run to do in the afternoon after their hard training session and um, yeah he only sort of later discovered that the majority of them weren't doing that and in particular like the, the run in the afternoon um, yeah most notably the ones that were like winning all the major marathons um, so yeah they were just recovering more because um, they had done that hard session in the morning so yeah a bit of food for thought there I'm not saying yeah, just uh, to train, because obviously you do need to train, but it's just about getting more bang for your buck. Um, and on that note, I came across a podcast um, uh, the other week, which was by a sprints coach called Ryan Flaherty. Um, I think that's how you pronounce it. Anyway, uh, he did loads of studies on gym exercises and which were the most effective at getting results with his athletes. And... Uh, effectively, what he found was the hex bar deadlift, just the concentric phase, would be the most effective at increasing power and therefore speed in his athletes without like um, putting any on any muscle bulk because you don't want unnecessary muscle bulk really because it's just extra weight to carry. Um, so yeah, I wish I'd known about that um, early on in my career because I used to spend about three hours in the gym literally, and he would say, you know, he would probably do hour tops with his athletes um, so that was the sort of the linchpin exercise in fact I've done a little video with my friend this week she did a session with me and that shows you the hex bar in there um, I, I do actually do the concentric and eccentric phase of that lift as you'll see um, because yeah I've not been over training this winter and I, and I need to get a bit of um, yeah, muscle mass back let's say um, so uh, yeah anyway I'd say you'll see the hex bar in that Video. Um, so in a slightly different context, uh, this whole idea of um, resting more, um, I was really intrigued to see someone posted on Facebook about Finnish schools and um, they have they, they are renowned as being the best schools in the world basically and um, yeah in the not sort of too distant past they just changed their whole philosophy about school and um, yeah, paradoxically, I guess, they decreased the school day. So they, um, oh yeah, and there's a teacher in, in the um, video, uh, it's wondered by Michael Moore actually, and uh, she said that the brain, it needs to rest. And so, yeah, they, they know, they still sort of teach the, the kids all the different things that, you know, we would learn. But um, 
they don't hammer it into them quite so much and, and they sort of they, they do fun things and more practical things and they just um, seem to have a more of a sort of a caring approach as well to their pupils and you know the staff themselves as well they just seem so much happier and less stressed than like what we have over here um, and yeah one of the teachers in particular said that school is about finding your happiness which I, um, I thought was really nice um, so yeah, there's there's a lot to be said for resting, and uh, on that sort of a final note, um, I uh, I love watching like documentaries about athletes, and um, Usain Bolt. I watched one about him, and uh, it struck me how um, willing he is to recover. You know, he's uh, he showed up to a training session like a, a couple of hours late once because he'd overslept, I think. But you know, he just recognised it was far more important to uh, to rest. Um, so yes, you might notice that we're wearing a t-shirt in the, in honour of this podcast, uh, not podcast, it's a blog, isn't it? Blog. Um, so I'm just going to show you that a bit closer. Um, yeah, <laughs> Jamaica, I've never been there. Um, so maybe I should go, hey, and then learn to chill out a bit more. Um, and um, yeah, be happier. <laughs> no. But anyway, there we go. Gosh, it's quite a long one today, but uh, I hope you found it useful. And I'll be as ever post up links to uh, the sorts of things I mentioned in here. And um, yeah, have a good rest of the week, whatever part of the week you're in now. <laughs> I'll post again soon. Okay, take care. Bye bye. <laughs>